Excited to be here at Midori Farms, makers of easily the best crowd in Washington State, maybe even the world. Let's see how they do it. I'm Marco Colby. This is Hanako Myers, um, and we make Midori Farm sauerkraut and kimchi. It's certified organic and processed with a lot of love and care. All right, so tell us a little bit about how you make your kraut. Uh, well, Midori Farm makes uh, traditionally fermented sauerkrauts with the ingredients that we grow on the farm. Um, we, we grow between 20 and 30 thousand pounds of cabbage every year that we transfer to our kitchen and process with other vegetables from the farm to make different types of sauerkraut and kimchi. Cool. How'd you start making your kraut? Uh, I lived in Korea right out of college in 1996. I got a job there teaching English and uh, everyone there eats kimchi so I got pretty interested in kimchi and came back to the States and started working on a vegetable farm and just started making trying to make sauerkraut and kimchi that way and it kind of snowballed into like people wanting it, friends wanting it and uh, then I moved out to Port Townsend and met Hanako who was managing a vegetable farm and uh, we kind of decided to start our own operation. You guys go to amazing lengths to achieve the pinnacle of quality, starting with growing the vegetables. Tell us a little about that. We um, have started with the seed and in some cases we've even started with um, breeding a crop specific for the production of our sauerkraut, like a, a Chantenay carrot that we've been working on selecting for bigger, sweeter roots, or a cabbage that we've been uh, growing and selecting certain varieties of it because it is more winter hardy or has a sweeter taste or stores longer. Um, so I, I really feel like you're just tasting um, the Olympic Peninsula essentially. Our irrigation water comes off the backside of Mount Townsend and down an irrigation canal which we then irrigate the vegetables with so you're getting pure uh, mountain snow for the, for the water that makes up the sauerkraut uh, which is pretty remarkable. Um, and yeah, and you're just getting to taste everything that we put into the soil when you eat the vegetables and all the love that we and our crew give to the process. Yeah, when Marco and I joined forces, it was just, um, it just made a lot of sense for us to start our own operation. It's worked out. What's the basic process for making kraut? It gets washed here, it goes to the kitchen, it gets shredded with um, a commercial grade shredder called the Roboku. And that can really, you can just shred like 35 pounds of cabbage in five minutes. Um, so that all gets shredded according to what is being made. We have different size blades for that. Uh, it gets salted, um, spiced or herbed if, um, if that's part of the recipe, and then mixed and then um, hand packed into uh, ceramic crocks. Um, at this point we're using uh, five gallon ceramic crocks and then it goes into fermentation for two weeks in our commercial kitchen. Um, and then it gets packed two weeks later and labeled and um, inventoried and put into cold storage. Why do you farm organically? Well, we farm organically because it's just the best way to farm if you, if you just look at a simple uh, systems approach to taking care of vegetables and using, uh, creating good soil, you know, if, if you work at the base level of soil health, you have a lot less problems or issues with diseases and insects, uh, and thus you have to purchase less inputs, and um, yeah, that's kind of our, our goal is to have the farm be as self-generating as possible. What are the best ways to eat your kraut? I mean, it, it's great on sandwiches and eggs. It just kind of livens it up, but uh, the combination of fats and the acid from the sauerkraut are really where I feel like it, you get the most bang for your buck with the, when you're eating it. So I think it's really nice to, uh, we can mix any of the sauerkrauts and kimchi with uh, butter or cheese or cream cheese and then blend it in the food processor processor and then you can either put that on um, toast or bread or bagels. bagels or put it on a uh, piece of grilled meat if you have it. 
Uh, it's just pretty universal to have around. And then uh, just cooking sauerkraut or kimchi with, with meats in general, like in braises or just uh, even on a stovetop is really nice because you just get that combination of the fat from the meats and the, and the acid from the sauerkraut. It's superb. Sounds delicious. What drives you? Why do you do what you do? <laughs> I think that we both love to eat good food. And that's kind of our number one, uh, I think it's what draws us to, to growing vegetables for a living and farming. Um, but then just being able to be outdoors every day, regardless of the weather and uh, yeah, just the love of plants and food and the natural world. Sounds great to me. And now that you've perfected your crowd, what's next? So I think now our goals are to uh, just get better at farming and be, be better stewards of the land and understand the exceedingly complex relationships between plants and humans and animals and soil and uh, make, make more good, healthy, nutritious food for people that live around here. All right, so there you go. Thanks to Marco and Hanako for showing us around and showing how they make the best kraut you can buy.